what's up guys welcome to my channel if you are new yet my name is divine i'm a musical five minominak drummer and a keyboardist i have been for many many years i started making these videos as a space for music lovers like myself to check out our favorite artists and break down some of our findings that make them so so fantastic make sure you follow us on instagram at the perseverance reaction in order to recommend the favorite singers for us to react to What's up, YouTube? Hope you guys are feeling good. Hey guys, we're back. You want to live with you guys. I'm using my video for you guys. It's amazing. My name here. is Devan, guys, and welcome to the first experience, guys. Today, we're going to be reacting to something different. This is not really a music reaction, but it is Jordan Peterson's best comeback. This man, what should I say about him? He's a really amazing man. Like, I love his speeches, I love his words he used, and uh, I would love to watch this video. It was actually recommended by one of you guys. You guys have to try something that is not actually in music. If you notice my channel now, I'm checking out some comedy skits and um, food books too. That is not actually, I just want to test it and do some things for people who are not really into music, aside music. So, it's the same. So, I start to check out this video, Best Combat. So, this is going to be my first time checking this out. I've actually heard about the man and watched some of his videos on TikTok. So I'm not actually new to him, but this will be my first time checking this comeback. Let's come back. Also, the first time. So, so guys, you know how it is. We'll talk less about it when we ask more. Let's get into this video. I want to go talk to Peterson. Peterson, do you have any comments on the Nazi presence at your protest? The presence of Nazis and white supremacists assaulting people at your protest. Do you have any comment on that? Yeah, I don't like oh, yeah. Nazis. And I'm sure, I mean, I would hope that if I was a student of Dr. Peterson, that he would refer to me as, as, um, as she and wouldn't have a problem with that. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, a personal pronoun preference still is a preference for what language other people use. And at the end of the day, I don't uh, have ultimate control of, over what Dr. Peterson uh, what the language he chooses to use, or anybody else for that matters, that's that's up to them. Okay, let me and find the out then. Rises, let me let me find out. If she were a student of yours, what would you call her? She. You would. Okay. We've established that. Why should your right to freedom of speech she. trump a trans person's right not to be offended? Because in order to be able to think, you have to risk being offensive. I mean, look at the conversation mm. we're having right now. You know, like you're certainly willing point. to risk offending me in the pursuit of truth. Why should you have the right to do that? It's been rather uncomfortable. Well, I'm, I'm very glad I put you on the spot. <laughs> well, well, I'm very glad that I have no, you get my, my point. Speech. You get my point. It's like you're, yeah, I, you're doing what you should do, which is digging a bit to see what the hell's going on. So and that you, is what you should do. But you're you exercising think... your freedom of speech to certainly risk offending me. And that's fine. Yeah. I think more power to you as far as I'm concerned. So you haven't sat there and I'm just trying I've just trying to work that out. I mean Ha, gotcha. You have got me, you have got me. Hey, yeah, gotcha! Gotcha! He he got her. Her. She yeah. got the box of voice yeah. 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 I like Peterson, like I love this man. Like he's very smart. And he doesn't just say words, he actually mean them. And each word he says I was like, there's actually a deep meaning in it. I love him about it. Like, she was just thinking, how am I to come up with this thing? Like, he just really, he got me. There's no, there's no escape routes. I love that. I love that. But that time. through my head. And there's not a secular humanist organization or country on the planet that has ever produced as a good thing, an intentional good thing, rapists and murderers. So. Well, that's, deb that's highly debatable. That's highly debatable. Actually, I mean, one it's of the absolutely that... true because there's never been a secular humanist government on the planet. I don't know. I think the Soviets were pretty secular. No, humanist. they. <laughs> then, oh, I know with, the... with all with all due apologies, you do not know the first thing about what secular humanism is. You should read the Secular Humanist Manifestos because what happened in Russia in communist countries was an institution of a religious-like structure surrounded around centered around an individual and forced atheism, none of which is consistent with humanism. The great. American philosopher Beyonce Knowles <laughs> said that it has been said that racism is so American that if you challenge racism, you look like you're challenging America. 
We are challenging inequality. We are challenging the refusal to see me as an individual. When we overcome that, have at it, we're all on equal plane. No, so okay. so no, I think it's good. good. I think it's good. The bot is getting stirred here. So I've got a couple of questions. So, so let's, let's, your side's yeah. folks, I'm going to go yeah. to Jordan, then to you, Let's Michelle. assume for a moment that I've benefited from my white privilege. Okay, so let's assume that. That's, that's fine. Assumption. That's Yeah, well, assumption. that's what you would say. So, um, um, so let's say, mm. here, let's get precise mm. about this, okay? Was that in very individual of you? <laughs> let's get precise about this, mm -hmm. okay? Let's get precise. To what degree is my pre present level of attainment or achievement a consequence of my white privilege? And I don't mean sort of. I mean, do you mean 5%? Do you mean 15%? Do you mean 25%? Do you mean 75%? And what do you propose I do about it? How about a tax? How about a tax that's like specialized for me so that I can account for my damn privilege You're so that I can stop right hearing now. about it? Now, let's get precise about one other thing, okay? We'll get precise about one other thing. Now, precise? Yeah, precise, preci yes. Mm. And so if, if we can agree, and we haven't, that the left can go too far, which it clearly can, mm. then how would my worthy opponents precisely define when the left that they stand for has gone too far. You didn't like equity, equality of outcome, I think that's a great marker, but if you have a better suggestion and, and won't sidestep the question, so let's figure out how I can dispense with my white privilege and so that you can tell me when the left has gone too far, since they clearly can. And that's mm. what this debate is about, about political correctness. It's about the left going too far. And I think it's gone too far in many ways, and I'd like to figure out exactly how and when so the reasonable left could make its ascendance again and we could quit all this nonsense. When you talk about, you know, feminizing men, it almost sounds derogatory. It's almost as if you're saying that no, to be right. feminine or to express any sort of femininity is actually inferior to masculinity. Um, and I think that is a huge problem even with, within the language that we use, you know, when you say, don't be such a girl, don't be such a pussy, the, the gracious insults that men can give each other tend to have feminine or origins like you know as I said pussy or baggage mm. um, or anything like that and I think again that speaks to um, a very systematic um, inequality uh, between the genders um, and, yeah, and you attributed the the, the uh, rates of mental illness among men to their inability to express mm. say sentimental emotions well, and I don't think there's a shred of clinical evidence to support well, that stance I, sorry um, no, no 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 well, well I don't think there's a shred of evidence I mean, to support that stance. The kind of violence, for example, that I, Lawrence is discussing is a consequence of competitive um, competitive violence among I think young there men. Is, as I, they, think as there is, I think there is some evidence that men find yes. it difficult to talk about things and that, that um, and they also ways in which you can help out. young men to they, talk about they, things And that's the evidence for yeah. the differential rates of, of mental health and suffering? I, also, I don't I think know, so. I also don't think, I, um, when you're talking about things being so innate, um, you know, I mean, Judith Butler would have said that, you know, gender is a construct, that gender is a performance. Mm -hmm. um, well, Judith Butler look, doesn't know what she's talking about in the least, so well, I don't accept that. I mean, that that's interesting, a, but I, I She's I, no I scientist, agree with she her. doesn't know the well, psychological then if you look at someone literature. Like and this is all under the influence, you say, of postmodernism and neo-Marxism. Neo -Marxism. Yeah, but well, aren't those things two separate things? They're completely separate, mm. you know, and this is something I've been criticized for. Dr. Peterson doesn't understand the difference between neo-Marxism and, and, and postmodernism. It's like, I understand the difference perfectly well. It isn't me that's conflating them. It turns out that the people who push postmodern doctrines in the university almost al always ally themselves with a Marxist viewpoint. Mm -hmm. And that is logically incoherent. But I would say the postmodernists really don't give a damn for logical coherence because they regard that as part of the oppressive, patriarchal, Eurocentric view of the world. The idea that there's an objective reality and all of that and that you can deal with it with logic. You accept this oppression narrative without question. You know, a hundred and twenty. I don't. Years ago, I don't accept anything without question. I'm just telling you a fact. That's not a fact. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Women were, women were expected to stay home and take care of the kids and cook a meal. That's a f Women didn't have reliable birth control until 1960. You know, don't you think that played a role? Don't you think the fact that they, they didn't have reliable care for their Are you their blaming women cycles, for not being they, allowed to lead countries, to lead nations? Because they didn't They were allowed to lead nations. There were queens in many countries. I think you have no idea how much this oppression narrative has saturated your thinking. Why do you think it is that so much of what you say is so very popular with the alt-right? It isn't. 
And you don't have any evidence for that at all? Uh, well, any I'm, more than the I'm, evidence that alt-right people Dane watch Stormer, this Dane Stormer, neonite yeah, website, that's savior the one of Western I'm going civilization. On. Oh, well, there was, that was all taken apart today by a number of Jewish publications, by the way, showing that, first of all, that was all satirical commentary on the part of the alt-right, directed at taking me down, for example. And there was an alt-right article yesterday published t saying that I was a Jewish stooge and shill. So well, this is absolute nonsense, and I don't, uh, uh, I don't appeal primarily to the alt-right. There's no evidence for that at all. It's the, it's the no, proclivity I said, of... I never said, pr pr I never said primarily, um, yeah. Jordan. What I'm interested in is why you think that you get the reaction that you do from the alt-right, looking at you know, the Kathy Newman documentary. Uh, what the reaction? Get into interview. There's 10 there million people lot, watched that awful, and commented awful, on it. I'm, I'm talking about what I saw, mm. and I'm curious to know what your reaction was to the, to the, to the glee with which the alt-right seized upon uh, that well, interview. I don't shall accept we, the... Shall we do with the death threats? I mean, she had, yeah, I think, a dozen I don't accept the threats. concept that it was the alt-right that was doing this. There were 10 million people who commented on that video, and about 95% of them commented negatively on Kathy Newman's behaviour. You think there's 10 million alt-right trolls watching that? Uh, I see very little of the pursuit of justice characterizing the modern university. I see a tremendous amount of the pursuit of vengeance for things that don't even deserve to have vengeance extracted for them. So give me an example of what doesn't deserve vengeance. How about the existence of the patriarchy? You, but you don't mean now that women have not suffered injustices in Britain. Virginia Woolf couldn't go to university, or rather she couldn't get a degree. Women have been excluded in all kinds of ways from social situations, have they not? Yes, but people have been excluded from social situations in all kinds of ways. And I don't like this, the narrative, the, the social historical injustice narrative as a way of looking at the world. The way that, that young people now are taught about the relationships between men and women throughout history is that the fundamental narrative is that men oppressed women throughout the course of history. And then that kind of came to an end when everybody woke up in 1964. No, no, no. Yeah, no, really, no, that's no, really it. No, listen, I don't know what it's like in Canadian universities, but that's a, what I call, and I forgive this European reference, mm -hmm. that's a kind of punch and duty way of seeing it. That is not how universities as a whole operate. Well, that's and, how they operate in Canada. We well, had the biggest scandal in Canadian university history last year when a graduate student was hauled in front of a Maoist Inquisition for daring to show a five-minute video of me discussing issues like this on public television. The universities are in far worse shape. Maybe they're not in such bad shape in the UK as they are in, in North America, but they're in plenty bad shape in North America. Forgive me, and I'm sorry you were involved, but that is not the biggest scandal the biggest scandal will be the number, for instance, of suicides that are prevalent amongst undergraduates. The fact that one academic was holed up, in my view, inappropriately for doing what was done is not the biggest scandal. You're inflating well, it's things. It's not the biggest tragedy. The, but the suicides the biggest are a bigger tragedy, but it was certainly the biggest scandal. Canadian universities don't make international news. Your background, it's pretty earthy. But how did you connect that with your current... I love his comebacks. Yeah. What, you said that you became disillusioned with socialism. I became disillusioned with ideology. I with ideology say. in general. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, that's certainly not something that's changed. I mean, I don't like ideologues. He doesn't just accept what everyone says. That's one thing I like about him. He, he has his own narrative and perspective of our life and how it should be. But this world has changed it upside down. According to him, he like, they always feel like uh, many of them were oppressing women ever since the 90s, but until 1964. Well, he was like, that is not how it was. Like, it's not like many of them were oppressing women. Women also have their own seat. But the way they are taking it like they have always been oppressing women don't have seat, then how do we have feminism at it? How do we have some also other powerful women in history before 1964? Like, if you get to this point, you know, he's only trying to hit the point like, People are not really getting his facts. Some people are actually getting it. Uh, he don't accept what you think you should accept. Mm -hmm. He feels like he has his own perspective about how things should be. It's not because everyone is accepting, it's not because you yourself accept it. That means he changes his own ideology and his own way of thinking. And how he sees life is like people have been following some pattern that he feels like, no, there ought to be a correlation, there ought to be a correlation in such aspects. Uh, I love Peterson. I love his ways every time I see it on TikTok. Like, I always like following him. I always like listening to what he's saying. Uh, some of all these clips, yeah, I've never seen them before. This is actually my first time. 
Uh, and I'm really glad of you checking this out. Thanks for recommending this. I'm really glad you guys took this such video for me to check out. This is really amazing for me. Can you talk about it please? I love the fact when he's saying something, he says based on what he understands. You see, he's a lecturer. He has actually read and studied about a lot of things. So for him to speak, he's speaking based on his own understanding and based yeah. on what he has experienced he's or what he has studied yeah. about. Oh, no, so please. he's speaking with a lot of knowledge and a lot of understanding. Standing, yeah. So he's always explaining in these days. So I really do like the way he. It's not just like normal people that just say anything, just yeah. way they're reading it online or stuff like that. But he knows what he's talking about and he can defend himself wherever yeah. it is. So that's why I see him. Any question is at him, you already have an answer because Straight. he has been through this, he has studied this, so he understands what the question is about and he's ready to answer you and make you understand his own perspective and his own idea too. So I really do enjoy watching him right now. It's really good, guys. Comment down below your first time watching Peterson. Come back. How was your reaction? Give us a thumbs up. Share this with as many as can subscribe to YouTube channel. Let's know how it is. We'll see you guys in the next video. Make sure you stay. I just bought a bag, like an old lady. I'm back, wood smoking. I don't own papers. Pass that 808. That don't, don't shake her. Oh, bitch, you know I'm grinding like a pro skater. Baby, mama bugging. I'm so quick to hit ignore. Book